Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Choose Positive Living right here at selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my third time repeater here is Nicole Gerhardt. We've had her on two other times, and you've got to go back and listen to each one of the shows. They're totally different. And today we're going to be talking about a new program that she has going on. Um, she is a military wife. She is a divorcee from her first husband. She did lose a child for um, six, six weeks or seven weeks old. And uh, she's been through it all. She's even been through alcoholism. She's completely right up front with all the struggles, uh, struggles and strives that she's had. But she, in doing so, she's learned how to overcome them and what works. And this is what she's sharing with you today. In one of the steps we're going to be talking about today is learning self-love and how to acknowledge and honor your needs and truly love yourself and invite more love in. And I think that is probably one of the hardest ones. She's got to do step one. Okay, learning to love ourselves. It's not an easy thing to do, but it is something that is imperative, imperative that we do. As I said, I do wish you to come back and listen to our other shows because we did talk about the alcoholism, being the military wife, losing her son in the first show. The second show was along with Jen Satterley, where there are military wives talking about the struggle of being a military wife and how hard it really is and how they need to come together. So as I said, all these experiences that she's had has led her to doing what she's doing here today. And we're going to find out all about this new offering and this new course that she's got going on here. She is the CEO of, um, let me get it right, the CEO of, oh, come on, love, help me out here. Oh, yes, Spiritual Lighthouse Healing and Guidance, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, it is about that spiritual love. It is about being your own beacon of light in, you know, in the world for yourself and for others. So welcome back, my love. Great Thank to have you, you back here again. Me. I feel so blessed and honored to be here a third time. It's been amazing. So yeah, you. when I third time, you she gets her own page. So all you have to do is put in her name and all of our shows will come up. And uh, I don't want you to miss either one of them because there's amazing nuggets in each and every one of them. And it is true, isn't it? All the experiences, you know, all the adversities, all the negatives that have happened to you have helped you not only in your own recovery, but how to help others in their own diversity of life. Yes, yes, yes. I fully believe I would not be where I am today. This confident, um, butterfly, or, you know, if I had not gone through what I've gone through from walking in on my son when he was nine weeks old, he was lifeless in his crib. Mm -hmm. I tried to breathe life back into him and he was gone. Multiple miscarriages. I was raped my freshman year of college by a group of fraternity brothers. Goodness, I was molested when I was a seven-year-old little girl by a family member. And then even the abuse I endured in my first marriage, which ended in divorce because I just couldn't take it anymore. The emotional, physical, mental, psychological abuse. My babies were one, two, and seven months pregnant. I said, no more. I'm walking out of this. And then my alcoholism, about to celebrate two years of sobriety next month. Yay! <laughs> it has been the hardest thing I've done. The last two years have really been hard, but it comes from the power of self-love. Mm -hmm. um, two years ago, almost two years ago, October 15th, 2019, um, I was infant loss and miscarriage awareness day. I'd gotten completely trashed, so drunk. I just wanted to drink away the pain of losing my child. And I fell down two flights of stairs. My husband found me at the bottom. I was barely breathing, barely responding. He thought I was gone, called 911. They got me to the hospital. And even the doctors in the emergency room said, she's, she's not going to make it. She's got a brain bleed, contusions, contusions, concussions. And I spent, I spent away a week in ICU and I made it. And mm -hmm. I knew the moment that I did, life had to change. Yeah. It had to change. So I got sober, I got clean, and I started putting myself first. Mm. I told my husband, I said, I love this life we live. I love this military life, but I've got to start putting some time and some love into myself. Mm -hmm. And the crazy thing was, the moment I started reaching out for help and guidance, and I tell all my clients and all my friends, the moment you start doing that, all these people flood yeah. in. They want to help. Yes. People want to help you, especially 
women helping fellow women, mothers yeah. helping mothers. They want to help. And the moment I did that, I started realizing that I'm going to be okay, but I've got to start loving myself. I've got to start learning what makes Nicole happy, not as a mother, not mm -hmm. as a military spouse, not as a friend, Nicole, what brings me joy and makes me want to wake up every morning, excited to live life instead of, oh, I have to get out of bed again today. Yeah. But that's yeah. where all that comes from. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as a woman and especially as a mother, everything is them first. You know, my right. daughter is um, a new mom, six month old baby, and he's a half hour napper. And so it's so hard for her to get anything done at night. You know, she takes the first shift that gets up and the, her husband takes the second one. And consequently, if they if she gets four hours a night, you know, she's lucky. And this has been six months of this. And we do this because our children come first. And yes, when they're babies, they're still navigating kind of all the changes that the multiple amount of changes that they go through as children, as babies, and that we go through as women, never mind the fact that you've given birth, you know, you've got the hormonal changes, the, the, the sleep deprivation, the navigating and worrying about the baby and life in general, all of that comes onto your shoulders. And all it is, is can I manage Right. And you right. don't think about, well, if I nourished me, if I nourished me, I'd be able to marry, manage better. It isn't. It's always the external managing of everyone else before ourselves. And that's okay. just, I think, the way we're made. We are made that way. But I fully believe there are also seasons in our life. There mm -hmm. are those seasons when we have these newborn babies. They do need us. They, we do need to be their beck and call. Yes. But then you have these seasons that you go through in life where you have a little bit more time and independence. My children are all, I have six children, and they're all school age now. So you better believe that time I can have. It's not like you're just sitting around. I think it's so funny that people think stay at home. Mom, she just sits around eating bonbons. No, I'm trying watching, to watching soap operas, right? That's it. Yeah. In your curlers. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. I do not do that. I spend my time becoming a better woman. I feel so blessed. I was able to be a stay at home mom for 11 years, but I know my life purpose. and I know God put me on this earth to help fellow women. Yeah. And I want them to see that even as, you know, a young, a young mother, you've got to take that time for yourself. Yes. Because if you give, 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 your cup's going to be empty. And yeah. if you're kept empty, you're doing no good for anyone. No. And that's what I need women to see. You've got to take that time. Even if it's taking a shower. Yes. Heck, our babies are little. A shower by ourselves is huge. Yes. Going to the bathroom by ourselves is huge. Yes. And then as time comes, take a walk. Spend some time dancing in your kitchen while you cook. You know, there's easy ways. It doesn't have to be these extravagant, oh, I'm going on the shopping spree and spending all this money. No, 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 no. It can be the simple things. Yeah. Go outside and breathe in fresh air. If you live at the beach, go to the beach. You know, there's many things that you can do, but it's so, so important to take time for yourself. Yeah. I mean, it, it, deoxygenate yourself, right? If you're running out of breath, how can you help anyone else? So true. And so true. we, everybody, everybody, doesn't matter what sex you are, what, what work line you're in, whoever you are as a human being, we have to take time out for ourselves. Because if we don't, we overstretch ourselves. I, and I think that the whole pandemic, the way it shut us down for those first few months was a gift for so many people because it forced them to stop, stop chasing stop running after something. And so many people stopped and looked at, you know, and looking at my life is how do I live it? I'm on the go all the time. I never give myself a rest. And what am I doing it for? And it became such an incredible time of reflection. And I think, you know, for moms, okay, it might have been a bit harder because now the kids and the husband's at home. <laughs> and suddenly their teacher as well. So. <laughs> But it's so true. It gives me chills thinking about it. It makes me emotional because that was a time where you really had the time to look in the mirror. Yeah. The power of mirror work is huge. Oh, yes. Looking at yourself and discovering who am I? And then talking to yourself and I am enough. That's a big thing women yeah. struggle with. They're not enough. And we no. constantly think that. And I'll tell you, one of the most worst things you can do yourself is continuously scroll through social media and see these perfect pictures of these perfect families. There's no such thing as perfect. The it's shop, fake. Shop that shop is fake. Yes. <laughs> yes. Fake no news, folks. Thing. Fake news. Yes. yes. Stop yes. comparing yourself to that because it's not real. No. And instead of start finding what makes you happy, not your neighbor, not your friend, not your husband, not your kids. What makes you happy? It's it's a huge difference. Yeah, because your happiness then rubs off on on them, exactly. right? That's the way it is. Exactly. It's the the trickle down effect, right? Um, you know, it's the saying a happy spouse 
is a happy yes. house. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. So, you know, when mom's happy, she exudes that happiness and it rubs off on everybody and it ignites the happiness button within everybody. And I love that you say that because women, we think, oh, I'm being selfish. If, I, yeah. if she, Nicole, or I put myself first, I'm being selfish. No, no, no. The moment you start doing that, it affects your marriage. Yes. It affects yes. your children. Do you know how good it feels for my husband to say, you're amazing. That work you've done on yourself makes me want to be married to you forever. You know, Wonderful. My, my, my children say, mom, you're becoming, you know, this amazing person. You're such a great mommy. But that's what I'm saying. Like when you start doing that, it affects everything in your life. Yeah. Your relationships become stronger. You become a harder worker and happier what you're doing at your job, whatever your job is. Yeah. It doesn't matter what your job is. Yeah. You become that lighthouse, that beacon of light and hope for others, because, you know, the thing is a lot, you know, I hate the word compare. I hate it uh, because the moment we step into comparison, we feel less than. Right. And it's like um, that person's better than me. And it's like you have no idea the struggles that person's going through. Yeah. They must may just have a facade. It looks like everything is perfect in their life. Take that facade away and there's a mess behind it, yeah. right? So we can't, we can't um, compare and we can't judge and don't assume, Correct. right? It because you don't know. know. When I was a child, you know, everybody thought my dad was a pilot and, you know, we made good, he made good money. So we had this nice house with the nice cars, all this stuff, but they had no clue behind the closed doors. I had been molested. They yes. had no clue that my parents fought every single day right. physically fought that you have no clue right. and that's what I, I really hate that because people judge they're so quick to judge yes judge, 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 judge. and you truly have no clue what's going on behind closed doors at all no just because someone puts a perfect picture up on facebook doesn't mean anything no nothing. no not at all and i think get rid of comparison get rid of judgment competition is for sports or mm -hmm. certain games it's not for life right mm -hmm. you're not there you're not competing against anybody because we are all beautifully unique and different. Yeah, I, I look at it as an analogy of this. We're all a beautiful instrument. Once we learn to play it, we look for our orchestra to join. And in harmony, we create a symphony that resonates out. That orchestra is nothing without your instrument. So true. Right? But it needs your instrument to create the harmony. Correct. Yes. And I love that. Because if you think about, you know, I just shared everything I've been through, I would not be here today like this. Mm -hmm. I would not, it, those things are what makes me who I am. Yeah. Those things of losing my son, it makes me a better mother. I choose to see it that way and not look at it negatively. I choose that I'm more in the moment with my kids, yeah. off, my, off my phone, just being with them. So everything we go through in life, can, if you look at it in a positive way, you can learn from it and you can grow and it will make you a better person. Yes. I mean, you know, my kids are all older. They're all in their 30s. I've got 120, 39 this year. When did that happen? <laughs> it's like, ah! Um, and I've got one grandchild. And I look at my kids and it, it's, you know, to kind of look back at them as children. And I had a tumultuous marriage, you know, with, uh, I mean, even my kids say, how the hell did you get together with dad? You two are so unsuited. And I said, well, for four things, one, three kids, I, I, you know, he, yes. he gave me you. And the other, he gave me myself because in beating me down, not physically, emotionally, I had to find a way to rise back up and mm -hmm. rise back up in my own light. And that fight for me, that um, self-discovery yes. of who I really am and that I am enough. And if, if you don't like me, that's okay it's do I like myself and that was a long journey there but I wouldn't have had it I think if I hadn't gone through that adversity because yeah. those negative things do they are the catalyst aren't they into pushing you forward not yeah. that everybody has to have a traumatic right. upbringing or relationship with anything you know some people their life just might be blah mm -hmm. you know they've just they're not adventurous they're not willing to try new things they're just living their life by numbers and it's not working for them. And it's the same principle. Love yourself, ignite that love within yourself and you'll start loving life. So true, so true. And I love that you brought up age again too, because I see a lot of my friends, clients, whatever, they're like, oh, I'm 40 or I'm 50. I can't do this. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. 67 next week. Yes, <laughs> Have you ever been happier? I bet you're happier than you've ever been in your yeah. entire life. I'm more purposeful, more yeah. who I am, less apologetic of who I am and less bothered by whether you like me or don't like me. Yeah. Yeah. And that has to do with self-love. You know, yes. I know like I've been getting my tattoos and I got my nose pierced and all this stuff. I finally embraced. This is me. If yes. you want to judge me, I say it all the time. 
then judge me. Walk away because I'm walk, good. I walk love away. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm me on Facebook. I'll be okay. I promise. Yes. Yes. So. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that is, um, and it's not just the love, but it's also, I think, the boundary that you put around yourself. And I'm not for borders, but I am for boundaries. And it, that boundary is an energetic boundary. If you are of a low vibration and your idea of pulling yourself up is to try and pull me down, I don't need your, that energy and there is a boundary there. If you are of like or even higher vibration than me, we can dance together. We can share together because we understand that mixing of those energies is just going to be something sensational. But I think we do need to have those boundaries. And, and it, it, I think the hardest thing for people is when they're wanting to grow into that self-love, but they've got family and friends that are very judgmental. They're always pulling them down, always knocking them down. And they don't want to hurt their family or their best friends, but they have to kind of sever those ties for now in order to heal themselves. Because if they don't, they're going to be constantly adhering to that negativity and right. never be able to step into their own positivity. Correct. And sometimes honesty hurts. You know, I yeah. have to, I had to put a, you say not a border, it's not a border, a boundary up with my mother, because I feel like she did not protect me when I was going through all that stuff. And she knew how my father treated me and the things he did to me. And so now that we, you know, we're here in military, moved from the Pentagon, we're here in Panama City now, she lives over in Destin. But I chose not to let that affect the relationship with my children. Me and her is a different thing than her and the children. Right. But I had to put that boundary up. So my husband's the middleman. And that's okay for now until I can work through the forgiveness, until I can let it go. Yeah. And then we'll have that relationship. But right now, when I need to be working on myself, it's okay to put those boundaries up. You have to protect yourself or you can't do the work. Right. Well, that's your number two step. Control your environment. Yeah. And, you know, it's very, very important. It's, it's okay to go insular. Right. It's okay to say, no, I'm sorry, I can't volunteer for this right now. I can't do that right now. I need to put the eyes in and right. do some self-recovery. And you know, if people would judge you for that, oh, if, 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 that's, their, that's their issue. Don't yes. take it on. That's their issue. Yes. It's you that you need to put that importance on, the importance yes. of self, not self-importance, that's ego, but the importance of self right. and your own and survival. I get it. You know, as mothers, we want to do everything. I want to be on the PTA board. I want to be yeah. in the homeroom, homeroom of the class. I want to do this for church. I want to do this. There's, there is a point where it's just too much. Yes. It's just too much. And it's okay to say no. And I know we struggle that as women. We do struggle with that. Yes. I want women to learn that that's okay. It's okay to say, I've got so much on my plate right now. I can't give anything else. That is perfectly okay. And people respect that. They, they will. And if they don't, bye. Bye. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Um, because they're not the kind of people you want around you. Exactly. You don't right? want to with you, no. Yeah. Yeah. You want the people that say, come on, take the time. I'm here when you get back. Mm -hmm. Right. Or I'm here if you need me. Right. Those are the kind of people you want around you. Um, you know, your step free is em empowering habits. Uh, learn to create habits that will improve all the areas of your life and to make you happier and healthier. We have to actually delete old programming before we can insert new programming but we can do it as we're deleting the old we can insert the new but we, we can't just insert the new with the old in the background because that old in the background is going to eat away so we have to acknowledge old habits and go you do not serve me anymore right. and consciously it's like the you know the rubber band thing on your wrist mm -hmm. you find yourself saying something negative snap yeah. that rubber band <laughs> ouch Right. And so it associates that negativity with pain. So you don't want to go there. So whatever it, you need to do to get rid of the old programming and insert the new habits, the new programming is essential, isn't it? It's so essential. And I do tell my clients, like when you're reprogramming, start putting a morning routine in place that your morning will affect the rest of your yeah. day. Goes. The first thing I do, as crazy it sounds, I thank God for being alive. Mm -hmm. I, there are times I've tried to commit suicide in my life. Thank God that didn't work. I think, and I thank for the light. And I think that I'm waking, I'm sorry, I'm in my room right now so I can see it. <laughs> I, I'm waking up in a bed with sheets over and I've got a roof and I've got food I can eat. That's the first thing I do. And the next thing is I make a list of 10 things I'm grateful for. And the power of gratitude is oh, insane. Huge. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. If you're grateful and you're really like, and you really mean it, you're really not just doing it to do it. Like you really mean it. Your life will change. Mm. The power of gratitude is incredible. And the yeah. next thing I 
I go and do mirror work. I say, I am beautiful. I am enough. I am worthy. And I love myself just the way I am. And those are powerful things to start your day off because then you go through the day thinking, I am, I am, I can, I can, you know, and I'm grateful. It's just a whole different mindset to look at the world in a different view. We then see things to be grateful for. Now, if you're miserable, you'll see everything that's going to make you miserable because the track, that energy attraction, when you choose to get out of bed and look at life gratefully, you know, right now it's, it's a cold, rainy day. The first time we, we've had in six months, I think, you know, and it's like, I'm grateful for it because we didn't have any rain throughout the summer and you could see the trees, you know, are just <laughs> absorbing all that water and I'm feeling a bit chilly, but that's okay. Cause it's yeah. fall. And you know, it's that change of seasons and I'm grateful for those change of seasons. So we need to look at more of that gratitude because it does create more of a positive attitude and and everything you look, you do see the things all to be grateful for. Negativity begets negativity, neg negativity and positivity begets positivity. So, you know, that is an important one to have. And, you, you know, the mirror, very hard to pull the wool over your own eyes when you're looking eyeball to eyeball in yeah. the mirror, right? And it's hard. It's, it's one of the hardest things I do that when I'm teaching my children, my clients, my friends, when you're looking in the mirror, you're looking at yourself. Yes. You, know, you, can't, uh -huh. you can't do this. You're looking at yourself. Yeah. And you know what? I tell them, oh, I don't have the time. Yeah, you do. Do you put on makeup in the morning? Yes. While well, you put on makeup, yes. you're already looking at yourself. Yeah. And, tell, and it can be different for everyone. My biggest struggles were I thought forever I wasn't worthy of, of love. Mm. And so I, I am worthy as one. Confidence. Man, when I was raped, those boys stole that away from me. It took me yeah. years to, real, to realize that I can be confident again as soon as I forgive them and let that go. Confidence. I am confident. And you just repeat it. I even write them up or put them on sticky notes. Yes. If you're looking at it eye level and if you're looking at yourself, you can't run away from it. It's no. Face. And you know, if you do look at yourself and you're looking tired, it's like, oh God, you old hag. No, no it is like, you know, that. you're looking tired. Are you taking enough time for yourself? Exactly. Look at yourself as if you were talking to your best friend or one of your clients. Right. Because that's what you are in that moment. And I know we've talked about this before. I know on interviews, but you have to turn. The, there's a mindset. There's a way to think about it. You know, I know I've talked about we move every 18 months. We're about to move again. You start over mm. new schools, new neighborhoods, new friends, new doctors. Everything's new. But I choose to look at it not like that. I choose to look at it it's like we get to see the world. Yes. All these different cultures meet all these new people. So my friend circles like this. And, so, you know, there's a way to everything in life. It doesn't have to be that. But there's a way to look at it in a positive way. Everything. Growth change you know there's so many different ways to look at it that way instead of oh i can't believe i have to do this oh i can't believe it. Oh. the military pays our bills so i'm thankful for that yeah exactly that. So exactly if I, gotta move, I gotta move you're right and the other thing is if you don't like moving don't marry a military person exactly, <laughs> you're exactly. Right. you know how that works out i think i've told you my story about my husband i said he will not yep. be in the military he's been in 24 years he will not have more than one or two children because i already had three he's got three too so we were the brady bunch that's what did <laughs> And then he had to live near me at the part at that time. He was at the 165th in, in Savannah and I lived in Destin. But with that one, when you know, you know, it's just one of those yeah. things that when you're, when you've already experienced all the crap, yes. let's say, cause my first marriage, I knew exactly what I did not want. I yeah. knew exactly that. And then when you're open to that, the God, the universe will put that in front of you, but you have to be ready, you know? Yeah. And you were pregnant. I was pregnant. I mean, you I met him. Pregnant. You know, and for someone to say, that. okay, you've got two kids and you're pregnant and, and, you know, still uh -huh. be interested. I mean, already that's a massive leap. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you really got lucky, <laughs> but you wouldn't have got lucky had you not put out that vibration. Yes. And I love that you say that because it's so true. Like your energy affects everything mm -hmm. and you want to surround yourself. If there's this woman that's saying, oh, she got this, she got, if there's always this comparison instead of lifting you up. You don't want that in your life. You want to surround yourself with people that support you, not compete with you. Competition. That's it. And now we learn it as little girls. We learn it on the playground when we're little kids. And I wish women could see that the power of um, lifting each other up, inspiring, encouraging each other is so much bigger than pulling them down. Yeah. I mean, what are you going to get from that? A, not a happy life. No, no. And somebody isn't up, up for a moment. And then how does that make them feel? You know, I mean, this is actually your fourth thing. It's like letting go of shame and and habits and you know those those things of shame and blame and guilt because my god if we if we stacked it up it would be bigger than us and you know so many people are carrying guilt around i wish i hadn't done that well you know what we do what we yeah. do in that moment based on what we know yeah. 
when we know better, we know not to do it. But we can't beat ourselves up for not knowing in the time. No. And, and the thing is, if you're trying to get help at this point, that's huge because what's done is done. You can't relive the past. You can't redo the past, but you can look at the future. Yes. You can look how you can change and do it differently moving forward. Right. And, you know, if, if there is somebody that you've harmed, yes, you you know, that, that um, if not asking for forgiveness, but apology, mm -hmm. you know, if you feel you need to apologize to someone, uh, you know, I've apologized to my children for not being the kind of mom I wanted to be because I was so busy trying to just survive in my marriage that my children were everything, but it just, I felt in, when I um, exited the marriage and started my own self-discovery and becoming the better me, I, I wish I could have given them that, mm -hmm. but I couldn't give them that at the time because I was in the tumult. So, but I gave them the best I could, but I apologized to them for not being that kind of mom because I know that they would have liked that and I would have liked to have been that. It wasn't possible. I can't be guilty over it because it wasn't possible in that arena. Yep. Yes, it's okay to um, let guilt go. And it's, you know, I know we'll get to the power of forgiveness in a second, but apologies, yeah. that's huge. We are adults. You can't apologize, you know, yeah. and I, I think people get so stuck in, oh, I can't fix the past. No, you can't fix the past. But like I said, moving forward, you can fix the, you know, the future. But if you've got someone you need to reach out to and say, I'm sorry. Yes. Do it. You yes. Know? Do it. Yes, exactly. Um, we have an illusion of what we think we should be or what we want to be instead of allowing ourselves to, to become what we really are. Mm -hmm. Right. So. You know, your, your step six, you know, a better you, accept you and feel more confident in control of your future and embrace your change. And, you know, it is not about comparison. I need to be more like this person or I need to be more like that. No, you just need to be more of the beautiful essence of what you really are. That's so true. And it, I love it because it doesn't matter what makes you happy is what makes you happy. We're yeah. talking about you again, not your neighbor, not your friend, not mm. your kids, you. And I love this because, you know, I got to the point where I said, Jeff, I can't be this like military spouse with, you know, with a red you know button up or blue button up with a pencil skirt. That's not me. I'm not embracing who I am. Dyed my hair red, got like 15 tattoos, got a nose piercing <laughs> and finally, but I love myself. Mm -hmm. I love who I am. And I want women to see that loving yourself is really embracing who you are. Stop, I, you know, growing up, we always had to wear these little Sunday school dresses and our hair had to be perfect. Well, who cares about perfect? I don't want to yeah. be perfect. <laughs> I want to be myself. And that's yes. such a huge thing. And you, once you start doing it, you start realizing this is what I want to wear. This is how I want to be. And it affects everything in your life. When you feel confident and you love yourself, it, it's just a whole different ball game. Entirely. And that self-confidence exudes out to everyone else. People know how to treat you because you again have set the stage in how you wish to be treated. Yeah, and and if people, it's a sexy thing. yeah, if they can't treat you that way, then you know, they, they're, they're not going to reach you. Yeah, right? I've had too many people pull me down in the past. I'm not going to do that any longer. You can accept me who I am or not be a part of my life. Exactly. Being there, done that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right. And, you're, you know, you're saying the happier you live in the gratitude of now, and we're going to talk about that, uh, reframes your past experience and live um, a passion filled life, which is very important. Now, we can look to the past and we can go, I'm no longer that person. I'm no longer that victim. I'm no longer there. Right. And I, you know, people, I've had people who have shared things like you have, you know, the sexual abuse and this and that. And people say, aren't they reliving it? No, you could talk about it now without the attachment. That's and that's true. the important thing. You can talk about the past because it's molded your present and your future um, without the attachment to the pain. But so many people are starting to project forward of what they want. to be. I want to become this. I want to become that. You can't become anything unless you address it in the now. Amen. Amen. Yes, you cannot. And if you want to be this or become this, you can't do anything <coughs> until you've healed from your past. You just yes. can't. It's no. going to affect the rest of your life. It will drag moment, on with you. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
Oh yeah. And I know you talk about like when you share your story, it's such a powerful thing to share your story because mm-hmm. you're not just helping others. You're helping yourself hugely. Yeah. And I will say when I first started talking about my alcoholism, I was embarrassed. Like yes. it was very embarrassing. And so I, you know, it was like, it still clung to all those emotions, but the more you talk about it, the more healing you're going to, the more you cry, the yes. more you're healing. You yes. Know? And so, and you will get to that point where you can share and it's not all this baggage. You've become that survivor. You've become that warrior because you've overcome it, but you've got to work through it first. You know, um, I would say 95% of the people I've interviewed and I've done over 2000 shows over the last nine years is the people who have had extraordinary, horrific things happen to them, but they decided to work through the pain, work through the process, go through the healing and discover their strength, discover their courage, discover their abilities. And now all of them in some way are that beacon of light to show other people. This is the passage through. There is no quick downloadable app. There is no ignoring it. There is no shoving it in a Pandora box and hoping no one will open it. It is working through it. And that's where you discover how strong how courageous, how in incredibly um, ability that you have in life. You know, you discover how awesome you are through the yeah. flawsomeness, right? <laughs> so and it can be scary and that's yeah. okay. It can be very scary, but take your time. I want you to, I want people to realize like it's, it cannot happen overnight. Like, no. it it's going to take time, major time. And you've got to do those things to help you work through it. And then you can look at yourself and say, holy I can't believe I did that. Right. I cannot believe I worked through it. And now look at myself. I've never been happier in my entire life. And I've got a pretty crappy past. I've been through some shit. Yeah. But I've never felt happier because the moment you work through it, you feel more alive and you want to live life and you feel full of joy. And it's just a beautiful feeling to finally love yourself. Yeah. You're no longer your past. You're no longer what happened to you. You're no longer the victim of that. You've taken back your empowerment to be who you are stand tall in it and be that beacon of light for other people yep so true i love it it just makes me feel so happy and it's i love being able to show others that you can do it you can do it anybody can do it if you are ready to heal and you show up and do the work you can do it and it's amazing feeling yeah you know we we talked about forgiveness before but you know uh you're saying step eight uh, forgiveness lay down the pain by forgiving others and yourself I think we, we will forgive others before ourselves. A big one. Yep. Yes. I know I've talked about it. I've forgiven the, you know, my first husband for the abuse he gave me, you know, we took these three beautiful children and um, I've forgiven the boys that raped me, but you know, I will say that forgiving myself came last because I didn't yes. really think about it. I was like, Oh, I'm fine. I forgave. I worked through this. Da, da, da. No, you have to forgive yourself because we blame ourselves. Oh God. I yes. I blame myself for being raped. I thought it was, it was my fault. Yeah. That I had drank that night. Cause I had a black dress on. No, 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 no. You, it wasn't, but you have to forgive yourself. I had to forgive myself for being an alcoholic. Mm. for putting my children and my family through that mm-hmm. and that's hard when yes you're really digging deep and look at yourself that's that's tough to really do that for yourself but the, it's so important because if you don't forgive yourself you're not going to move on to the next step you're just no no and you know the gift you got given there was falling down the stairs mm-hmm. you know facing death yeah. you know that i call that the cosmic two by four yeah. And, you know, it's like, have I got your attention now? Yeah. And, and, you know, and for everybody, there is a rock bottom we have to reach before we can go, okay, enough is enough. Now I and have I to climb back up. People, I know a lot of people say, oh, you don't have to get to rock bottom. The honest truth is you really do. Yeah. You really do. And, I you mean, know, the rock bottom is different for different people, right? You don't have to have a life-threatening thing to get gone. there. Yeah. Yes. So true. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like you, Oh, I was almost dead. So now I woke up and saw yeah. it can be something else, but yeah. it, you really have to reach a point where you're ready to change. Yes. Enough is enough. Mm-hmm. Right. I can't take this anymore. There's got to be something better. I'm willing to go forward. And there is, there's always yes. something better. There is always, always. And, th- and that is up to us, whether we're going to work on it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, number nine, coping rituals, positive ways to feel good, overcoming insomnia, anxiety, and stress to feel more alive. Uh, <laughs> insomnia, I'm one of those. Um, just, just the way I'm made, I think. But um, anxiety, you know, I, I did a great show yesterday on the gut. You know, mm-hmm. the brain and gut. I've done a few shows on the brain and gut. 
and the, our anxiety goes to our gut and it affects our organs, liver, kidneys, colon, which then affects the rest of the body, including the brain, brain fog and, and just uh, more anxiety and depression. And we, uh, we've also got to bear in mind that what we put in our body is just as important as you know what we what we put on our body or how we treat ourselves you know your alcoholism you know bringing your body down never mind everything else down and that now no longer drinking obviously eating healthier and putting yourself first and how your life is just so much more physically and mentally abundant because of it it's so true and you know anxiety is a scary thing mm. i feel like we almost all suffer it in some way oh yeah yes anxiety you know one of the things that i know is a huge thing if you start thinking about your future oh what's next what's next or you wake up in the morning you're like well you're going to get anxiety because it's yeah. the unknown it's the unknown we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow there's no guarantee of anything you know um but the way that you treat yourself and your body will help with your anxiety if you take a minute let's say you're having to step away for a minute you don't have to get to that text message right now you don't yeah. have to get that phone wall, phone call right now take a step back because if you don't put yourself first, you're not going to overcome anxiety. Right. You've got to, you've got to work through that. Another thing is sleep. I know insomnia is a problem, but I will say my sleep did improve the moment that I really figured my shit out. It, it, yes. The yes. moment that I really started putting myself first, I realized that a big trigger for me was more of my PTSD. Mm. And, you know, symptoms of that is anxiety, is depression, but it was more of like, I needed to heal before I let that anxiety and that depression kind of go away. And depression is always looking in the past. Don't do that to yourself. If you're yeah. constantly looking at how your life used to be, you're going to be depressed. So right. don't do that. Pay attention to what you're putting inside your body and new coping methods. I, I talk about coping instead of drinking, go take a bath. I've talked about that before. Yeah. Go exercise. Exercise is not just about losing weight. Exercise right. is to get your endorphins and your vitamin D. It's, it's, it's all of that. So there's a definitely a way that you can have new coping rituals that make you much happier than the negative, like drinking or go shopping. There's, you know, addiction mm. is not just alcohol. There's right. so many different addictions. Oh, God, there's yes. There's a way to deal with that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to insert a little something here because uh, my my anxiety and my stress in my marriage led to fibromyalgia. It triggered that. And one of the things with, um, with fibromyalgia is depression. And it's, it's chemical. So it is a chemical thing that happens. And, you know, people say snap out of it. <laughs> you just want to hit them. This has got nothing to do with intellectualism. You talking to yourself or anything. It's just something that like a despair happens. Somebody can put their hand into your stomach, and rip out your heart, you know, it's um, and it's so overwhelming. And, you know, anxiety, I'm an empath, so I'm picking up things all the time. And, you know, it's very hard to keep that out. And I have to be very, very cognizant of um, outside anxiety or pressures because they can come in very, very easily. And I think that is know yourself and your own sensitivity. You know, you know, somebody else may be able to take more than you or, you know, handle this better or handle that better. Know yourself. Know if that, you know, that that causes me stress and anxiety. I can't go down there. This is going to trigger depression or it has triggered it. Don't blame yourself for being depressed again. Do what you need to do to go through it. Um, but know yourself. Because yeah. a lot of people's illnesses have come about through the, um, the things that have happened to them, right? And those illnesses may not be able to just go away now. They're a part of their life that they have to manage. So you're not being selfish when you say to people, I'm sorry, I have to close the doors around me right now because this is how I managed to get through this well, particular I time. I to say that too. If you need to see a doctor, please go see a doctor. Yes, there, yes. That. I do. I still see, and I will say openly, I still see a therapist and I still see a psychiatrist because I want to make sure I'm 100% where I want to be. And that's okay. But yes. if you have to take medication, I did for years. That is okay. I want, I want people to see that, that it's okay to go see a doctor. Do not feel like bad about that. No. no. It doesn't just happen. I didn't just become this person. I saw doctors. I talked about my issues. I got their opinions on what was going on. So I want people to see that it's okay to get help. It's okay. Yeah. And, you know, for me, it took one hell of a long time to find the right pill. Correct. Because, so, you know, a lot of the pills would cause hallucinations. And, you know, I had one where I nearly drove my dog and I off a cliff. It was she that yeah. saved our lives, you know, and I had no intention of flying. I thought I could fly, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I said, oh, let's fly, you know. And um, so if eventually I did find the right one. And I'm not on it all the time, but I know when something happens, I need to, to. I need to go on this for a month or two to get my equilibrium back. I don't need to be on it 
uh, you know, uh, if, if things are going all right, if they're a little bit shaky, I need to be on it. And, and it's perfect. knowing yourself. Exactly. And as you are saying ask for help everything that you're helping people go through right now are the things that they're meant to do for themselves but if for themselves it is i need a psychiatrist i need a counselor or i need a medical doctor or i need alternative medicine you know acupuncture massage this that whatever you need that's going to help you get into your equilibrium and even get to that stage of, of placing that love on yourself do it do it. Do it. Find do the it. money for it. Do it. Exactly. exactly. Uh, yes, I 100% agree with that. And that just goes back to it's okay to ask for help. And I know we're afraid that we're being judged about that. I remember yes. my dad did judge me. Get away. Like if somebody's going to judge you for bettering yourself and getting help because you know you need it, you don't need them in your life. You just nope. don't. No, bye. no, no, nope, you don't. And, and that goes back to what I said before about family members and friends, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, they look at you later and go, oh, you know, you're such a different person. See? You seem so much happier. Mm-hmm. You know, you're doing something you love. I may not understand what you're doing, but you're doing something you love and they get to see you in your truth. So while you're working on yourself, if you need to put those boundaries around, I actually encourage it. If you need to do that, do it. Because once you come out of what you're going through, they will all see. This yes. is good work. If it was seeing a doctor, if it wasn't seeing a doctor, working yourself, it takes time, but they will say, oh, geez. Who are you now? You know? Yeah. 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 You're step 10. Feel free, um, alive and learn how to release the negative and embrace the light to live a life you've always dreamed of. Yeah. You know, this, this idea of freedom, um, the freedom is to be yourself without apology or permission. Yes, it is. It is. And that, being yourself is just, it feels so good when yeah. you can do that. And I, we care so much about what other people think and what other people are doing. Stop doing that to yourself. All yes. that's going to do is pull you down. You have to embrace what makes you, you, what brings you joy. And as much as we love our children, I get it. We want them to be happy. If you're not happy, that goes back to, if you're not happy first, you can't get them to that place of being happy. You've got to embrace yourself and who you are. And I love, I finally reached a point of just being free. My little daughter says, to my youngest daughter, she said, mommy, you're like that song. This girl is on fire because I feel free. <laughs> yes. I put on my gratitude list every, it just take me 40 years. Yes. And that's okay to feel free. And in free, free means embracing yourself, loving yourself, mm-hmm. just being like, I don't care what you think. I'm going to be me because it makes me happy. Yeah. If that's your reason. Then do it. If it yeah. makes you happy, do it. Yes. And I'm going to put a fine line in here too, is that be yourself. But, you know, as I said, um, I used to have a company called The Importance of You, and it's placing the importance upon you. Uh, the self-importance was the ego driven. And that is your importance above anybody else. We're not saying be important above anyone else. In other words, you're using other people to make you feel good. That's narcissistic. And there's plenty of those around. But to place that importance upon you to be the best you are so that your cup runneth over. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. No, not the egotistical, not yeah. that like, how many likes am I get on Facebook if I die? My, none of that. Yeah. It has to be out of the wholeness of your heart. You have to be doing this to make you a better person so you can be a better person in society, so you can be a better mother, yeah. so you can be a better friend. Yes, it's got to, you've got to um, hold joy and gratitude while you do that as well. It's not just going to be, oh, if I do this, then I'll get, because people are so obsessed with how many likes are they going to yeah. get on Facebook? How many friends are they going to have? Stop that. What if Facebook disappeared tomorrow or social media, yes. Instagram, whatever? You're still going to have a life. It's yes. <laughs> there was life before. Right? Yeah, when exactly. I was growing up, none of that stuff existed. And I exactly. was happy and happy. Yeah, and exactly. At the end of the day, I tell everybody this. It's about you. Yeah. You're the one that wakes up and goes to bed by yourself and wakes up in the morning. It's not these 5,000 friend, Facebook friends. It's you at the end of the day. If that was taken away, you live with yourself. Yeah. Yourself. You've got to do what brings you joy you happy it's what makes you love yourself when you put your head on your pillow you feel that you've contributed to the day right and yeah yeah you know you know talking about the the social media and everything it asks is like i i get um, people saying how many followers do you have i'll only come on your show if you have five or ten thousand followers and then i said my show is not for you because i can't guarantee who's going to listen but if one person listens and it changes one person's life. Hallelujah. 
Yes, I love right? that gives me chills too because it's so true. When I do these live videos and I talk about forgiving the boys that rake me or why I love this man that I had that abused me, but he gave me three children. I do that not to like how many people are going to come. What are going to? Yep. If I touch one person, yes, one person can see she survived being raped. Yeah, she survived losing a child. She survived being abused. I've done my job. I've done what God has put me on this earth to do. Exactly. Period. Exactly. And, you know, I have I've got some wonderful people on Facebook and I've, I've put out times of like, I'm going through a hard time right now. I need some love. And it's amazing how many people I get that, you know, I'm here for you. I've got a prayer for you and, you know, uh, or reach out to me privately. I'll, I'll give one example. My mom was dying. She was 95. She was very sick. She wanted to cross over, but didn't know how just didn't know how to die, you know, and it was a, a slow, painful death. And I put out a, a prayer vigil. I said, look, my mom needs to cross over, but she needs that light. I had a hundred people, over a hundred people, not just like or think, send out prayers and love to her. In 24 hours, it was a rainy day. And my sister said, all of a sudden, the sun came streaming through the window. It shone on my mother. And she opened her eyes and opened her hands and passed. Oh, my gosh. Right? Yeah. And that power, that power of that loving energy, I truly and utterly and completely believe that is what sent the angels to her to take her home. I do. Right? I do. And it goes back to what I said. If you ask for help, yes. people want to help you. Yes. They want, I am a very open book about my struggles on Facebook, on social media, whatever. I very much talk about, if I'm struggling with alcohol, I put that post up. Yeah. I want the prayers. And it's the same thing. You get these comments like, okay, it's not worth it. I don't want to have a drink. I don't want to give this up. These people, I'm praying for you. You can do this. You're stronger yeah. than the addiction. That is powerful. Yes. It's so and powerful. it's not just the words. It's the energy behind the words. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's that energy that you're like oh I can breathe I yeah. can do this and you feel lighter it's, it's yes. amazing it's amazing yes you know, uh, you, you talk about transformation of, you know, your life and creating new beliefs and stepping into confidence, you know, as a person and, you know, just that confidence is not going to come like that. I've made a decision. I'm going to get rid of this. You know, don't look like you're cleaning house and putting things in drawers and compartments and all of that, right? It, it's a little more complex than that, but it's also very easy if you go with the flow, mm -hmm. right? But that confidence that you seek, that you want to have, comes from the journey of letting go, stepping into new beliefs, loving and nurturing yourself, standing tall in who you are, grateful for who you are, proud for who you are, loving what your contribution contribution is now. That is where your confidence comes. It sure does. It sure does. And I, you know, I talk about my 12 steps. There's these things you do. And some people, I love how you said go with the flow because some people can work through self-love in two weeks. Some people it's like <laughs> six months, you know, yes. you have to go. You cannot force anything. No, if you are not ready. And let's say you said another thing I tell my client about forgiveness, write a letter to that person you need to forgive, right? Right. You don't necessarily have to mail it. Sometimes I just burn them. But if you're not ready to do that, don't force yourself to do that you'll get there. It's a process and it takes time. Nothing happens overnight. Nothing happens in just a week. It takes time. And you have to give yourself that. You can't force something or it's not going to work. It's no. not going to work. And you know, you talk about burning, uh, you know, as a spiritualist, I have a ritual that, um, you know, writing and in, in forgiving yourself and letting go, writing it down. I let it go. I give it up and then letting it burn is that you're giving it to the universe. You're giving it to God. Right, You are releasing it. And sometimes you do need to reach a person to say sorry to, and you can't move on until you do, because there's a blocked energy. But sometimes it's just a question of, you know, I am forgiving, I'm letting go, I'm giving it up, and then burning it is giving it up to God and releasing yourself from it. Yes. I love that. I, I love it. And each full moon there is, I gather with my girlfriends and we all write down what we want to just let go. Yeah. Not forgive, not really. It's let go. Yeah. Release and let go. And we burn it. And we know if it doesn't, if this is, if it doesn't burn, it's something that you haven't let go yet. Right. If it burns, then you move on. Yes. You know, I was on a trip with my husband in Savannah a few weeks ago. And I realized like I have not forgiven my mom. I know we talked about this earlier. 
I had forgiven my dad for what he had done, but I hadn't forgiven my mom. And so what I did is I wrote a letter, but it wasn't something I want to give her. It was yeah. something that I needed to do for myself. And I buried it. There's cemeteries there, these all these cemeteries. And I went and buried it there. And it felt so empowering to just do it. It's not that you just write a letter. You need to burn it. Now, there are some people you do need to talk to. Yes. And you'll, you'll know. It'll, be, you'll, it'll yeah. be obvious who you need to actually have. But the conversations you don't have to do in person burn the dang thing. And it feels so liberating to say, yeah, I did it. And that is the end. Yes. That is the end. I am letting it go. It no longer serves me to hold on to it. I'm letting it go and I'm releasing it. And that's the next step. And it's a powerful thing. It feels so good. Yeah. Just say this is the end. Bye. Yeah. And the thing we have to do, I think sometimes is understand where they were. You know, I come from a family that we were all sent to boarding school extremely early. I went uh, just before my ninth birthday. My brother and sister went at six and, and five, you know, which I, but you know, my kids weren't going to leave me anywhere. Right. But that's the way it was it being brought up in England. And it's, they weren't kind of very cuddly people. I was a very sickly child and I would be left in my room. I'd get breakfast, lunch and dinner. If I had an asthma attack, they would come in, but I was alone. And I felt that sense of abandonment. I know I was looked after, but I felt separate from, and I, and I carried that for a long time, but I have to understand from where they're coming from and the generation they were brought up in. Mm -hmm. And then my mother was the seventh child of the seventh child. There were nine altogether. And, you know, it was the children were seen and not heard, you know, and it's they did the best they could in their own understanding. And when we can look at that and we can forgive that they didn't do it out of malice. They didn't do it out to hurt us. They just did the best they could. You forgive and let go. Yeah, what I hear a lot is it was my parents' fault. I'm like, this is my parents because my parents did this. No, 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 no. Have you ever sat down with your parents and asked them, what was your childhood like? Yeah. What did you experience? Yeah. What did you go through? Because yeah. I guarantee you 100 percent they're oh, they're doing the best they can. They're yes. doing what they learned growing up. If they're if they're let's say being physical with you, they were somebody was physical with them. There's always it's you know, and the, yeah. the neat thing is though, you like my dad is, you know, an alcoholic, his dad was an alcoholic. There is a way to end that. There are yes. times you're like, I feel so happy that I was able to end that. Like it, so that can happen as well. But you've got to realize you can't just blame it on people, whatever no. you're going through or your, you know, your family, your parents, because I guarantee they went through something and they, like I said, they're doing the best they know how to do. And let us not forget, there was no such thing as counseling or coaching no. or any of these programs no. that are so abundant today. And, no. you know, my mom being British, it was, you know, suck it up and Right. And show a different face. They suffered in silence. Yes, they did. it. Even when I was growing up, I remember my dad says, you have to act this way. You can't say anything. Yeah. Wrong. You have to act a certain way every because we have the money and we do this. No, 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 no. But that's how he was brought up too. his yeah. parents were, you know, were wealthy and he was told hide behind the house. Don't say how things are going on, you know, in your house. You have to realize that it's they are doing the best they can. That's yeah. how they were brought up. And it, it, you have the power to change the future. You can't change that past. No, you can't. And, you know, even my family now, um, my mom, you know, got to point, I'm very proud of what you do. Um, but she was always scared. Are you airing dirty linen in public? You know, and I think I'm being open and honest because in sharing my vulnerability, I'm giving permission to others to have vulnerability of their own instead of being ashamed of it or hiding it, suppressing it, which is killing them. Right. Uh, my sister still doesn't. <laughs> she still doesn't get what I do at all. She loves me. She loves the fact that I love what I do, but still doesn't get what I do and never will. And that's okay. I accept her on this level and that level. We right. know we're never going to see eye to eye on other levels. Right. So the don't go there. Don't, don't go into that channel, right? Yes, 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 exactly. And the thing is, they, they love, if they really love you, it doesn't matter. You yeah. I'm saying? Like you just said, your sister loves you. And that's the important thing. We're all very different from each other. Other. But I will say one of the biggest things I get is thank you for being raw. Thank you for being yeah. real. Because when you show up like that, I guarantee you're helping somebody. Guarantee helping somebody. Permission. Exactly. Permission to be. Exactly. <laughs> right? that's yeah. Huge. That is huge. And you know, your 12th step, which is so very important, discover your true authentic self and activate your purpose. Mm -hmm. Set goals and have clarity for new steps so you can continue to transform. Yes. Purpose is everything it truly is everything. everything it is 
everything. And I, you know, I goes back to say, God made you the way you are today. He made you, you went through all those things in, in your life to overcome them and become who you are. And it's so important to find your life mission and your life purpose. You know, I thought forever, and I hate when people say just to stay at home mom, but I remember it was just being a stay at home mom. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. But then I realized it, it, my kids are going to grow up. What am I going to do then? Yeah. So then I wanted to, I wanted to find out God has you here for a reason, right? A life purpose for you. And you need to open up and be asking God, please show me what this is. And the moment that you start working on yourself, it'll reveal yourself. It's crazy how I'll ask a lot of my clients in the beginning, what brings you joy? They can't name anything. No, they can name. No, nothing. no. And it's devastating. But by the end, they see what brings them joy. And usually that helps them get the job that they want. They're doing what they yeah. want to do. It's, it's amazing. It's yeah. just amazing when you start, when you find your life purpose. And you know, you, you made a statement just now about just to stay at home, mom. That is 24 seven. 24 seven. It is not a nine to five job. It's 24 seven, 31 days every month. Everything. Is, if you get a day off somewhere along the line, you're too exhausted to really enjoy yourself. So, <laughs> and also you are responsible for the really? lives that you're looking after. So there isn't just a stay at home no, mom. I can't believe it is a job that. in itself that nobody ever shows appreciation for. They don't. They don't. Isn't that crazy? I think about that. The reason we're able to do the things we do is because I'm working at home. Yes. Because I'm taking care of kids. Yes. You better believe I'm the one teaching them. Okay, we're about to move again. We're going to have to go. Through. I'm the one making sure there's food on the table. I'm the one making sure yeah. the clothes are clean. Oh, yes. It is 24-7. Married or not, if you're by right. yourself or not, it's 24-7. Yes. And, and, you know, as I said, my kids are in the 30s. I, it may not be a day-to-day -day thing, but that concern and are worry so and everything else over always. your kids is forever right. more. Exactly. It doesn't matter the age. I guarantee you're still thinking about that. Yeah. And now you've got the grandchild, so you're thinking about the grandchild, yes. too. It doesn't end. It doesn't yes. End. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, and you can't get through that if you don't place importance upon your own beautiful soul, heart, spirit, mind, and body. Yep. It's so true. You know, I try to take a bath or I do something for myself every single day. And it goes back to what we were talking, just something. It doesn't have to be this huge, big, you know, thing. Just do something. Tell your kids, you can't be in the bathroom tonight while I take a bath. That in itself is huge. Yes. Being able to go to the bathroom by myself is huge. Yes. But you've got to take that time. You've got to do it. Yes. And you know, the thing is what you're teaching kids is those boundaries. This is mama time. This is mama and papa's time. This is your time alone. This is your siblings time. And if they know about this rotation of time, they get to respect and value more their own time, the time with the siblings, the time with the parents, instead of, you know, we, we as a parent think that we need to be 24-7 uh, on, yeah, and we are, like when the babies, you know, my, my grandson's six months old, he's at that stage where yes, they are. They you you know, um my daughter actually said to me, How did you do it with three kids? Because my husband was not a hands-on husband at all. And I said, I don't know. I just did it. And you just you you do, you do, you're in the now. This one needs this, this one needs that, that one needs that, and you just do it. But there are right? definitely ways you can put up your boundaries with your children as well. Yes. Like our bed is our bed. It's yes. not a kid's bed, it's mommy and daddy's bed. Right. And little things like that they will learn as they get older too. That yes. okay, like mommy and daddy need time, you know? So but the other thing is this word delegate. Yes. Dude, uh, we finally made a chore chart for our kids. You know how good it feels to have yeah. my kids helping me do laundry. Yes. I mean, they're old enough now they can fold clothes and yes. it takes this huge burden off yourself because you think as mothers, again, we think we have to do it all. We got to do it yes. all, every single thing. No, the moment you can write a little chore chart out and say, you're going to do this. If you want dessert tonight, you're going to do it. Yeah. It, it, it feels amazing. Yes. But it also breeds appreciation. Exactly. I want the more you do for people, the more they take you for granted. Oh, when, yeah. when you delegate and they're doing for themselves, and then they actually have more appreciation for all that you do do. So true. I want them to see that life's not easy. It takes work. Yes. Life is work. And I want them to see as they're young, as they're growing up, they have to do work to get the things they want. It doesn't just come to you. It no. does not just happen. Nothing no. in life is free, but God's love. That's what I tell them every day. Nothing is free, but God's love. Yeah. And a mama's love. <laughs> and <a> mama. <laughs> you know, I always used to say to my kids, if they did something wrong, I don't like what you did, or I don't like who you're portraying yourself as right now, but that's got nothing to do with how much I love you. Oh, yes. 
And we, we have to, you know, draw that line is I don't like this action or right. this, this performance, but I'll always love you. And that's, that's okay. You yeah. Never use that. love as a weapon. No, 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 no. Never. No, no. Or tell them they're bad. That's another thing. Right. The child was not bad. They didn't make a good decision. Right. The child was never bad. Right. Draw, the, draw it on the choice they've made and, and discuss that choice and why it was a bad choice. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's always that love. Yes. that they need to know it's and you know that uh, you know we're custodian love. Mm -hmm. yeah we love is everything god's love 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 for our children love for ourselves love is the center of it all it truly is it is truly the generator oh. of life it so is and i you know a big thing that i've been talking about lately like who cares if a man loves a man or a woman loves it? it's love it's love love it's, love. it's it all is. about that good vibration which is oh, so yeah. utterly important. important all right so you've got so much love to share and uh, you've got this wonderful program. And, you know, as I said, I want people to go back and listen to your shows as well. But you've got this Facebook group right now, this private one, and on the Healing Lighthouse Spiritual Empowering through Women Through Pain and Purpose. How do people get to that? What, you know, other than this 12 step, what are you offering people right now? So right now, I mean, you can always go to my website, spirituallighthousehealing.com. I have got a women's retreat coming up in Sedona. If you would like to be a part of that, you can reach out to me as well through my website. My Healing Cocoon, or my healing cocoon is the program. I'm also going to be the keynote ex, um, speaker at a few events coming up, and I've got a book coming out in a few months as well. So wow. if you want to be part of the group, you just got to get on Facebook and join, and, and you'll be able to be part of that. So the big things are coming. Right. So it's spirituallighthousehealing.com. Ma and that's also on the Facebook, also on Instagram and also and on LinkedIn. It's your name. Can you spell that out for people um, Nicole, who are just listening? Nicole, N-I-C-O-L-E, Gebhardt, G-E-B-H-A-R-D-T. Right. And uh, on LinkedIn, it's Nicole Gebhardt Heals. Yes. Yes. And they can find you there. And, and uh, Healing Lighthouse, empowering pain, to, spiritually empowering women from pain to purpose. Right. Right. And, uh, you know, I put up an article of yours, you know, on, the, the, you know, the, the, you know, daddy's girl and how wonderful it is that your now husband has just, you know, looked at your children as his children and vice versa. And, you know, that um, that wholeness of family It's not yours or mine. It's ours. And, uh, you know, and the love that they, you really did score well there, love. <laughs> And, uh, you know, invite people to go back and listen, you know, to the to the military show, too, of the, you know, military life, so how difficult it is, you know, and as you're talking about all the changes all the time, it's very hard to kind of have settlement. Um, but then how you were all there for each other, which is, you know, it doesn't matter where you move to, it's always about the community that you move to, Absolutely. right? You can make any house a home. You can yeah, home. yeah, exactly. It's been an utter delight having you back again, Nicole. Um, always, you know, always following you, always seeing what you're doing. You're always a bubbly light of love and energy. And you chose, you chose to live life positively um, and to let go of all that anchored you in pain. And, you know, now you're that beacon of light for other people and to show them how they can live it too. So keep on keeping on, girl. Yes, ma'am, I will. <laughs> <laughs> and you know folks nicole is is a, a pure example that you can overcome you can overcome any obstacle in your life if you choose to and if you're willing to go through the process and if you're willing to let loving god's love in and you know i the spirit is wanting to talk to you the the channel of god divine's word wants to speak to you can't speak to you through a closed heart open that heart up a crack, go and do something in nature, watch children laugh, play, watch doggies chasing balls, something that's going to open your heart a crack, because when that heart is open, that's when the love will come flooding in and the wisdom. Yep. Wonderful. Until next time, folks, remember, you can, you are, and we love you. Bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. You will hear many, many shows here at softdiscoverymedia.com. We have new shows for you out every week. Just find them on our podcast or, or what's new. If you feel that you have something to share that makes a difference in the lives of others, or you too feel that you could be a host, please contact me at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com and we will be glad to speak with you. Have a wonderful day.